What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Peter and I'm still building a Hypercube. But before we're moving on to the Hypercube, I first want to take a second of your time just to thank you guys. I really, really appreciate all the thumbs up, the views and the subscriptions you guys gave me since my last video. They really encouraged me to move on with this thing. I also want to tell you that I really enjoy reading your comments especially for the guys who are planning to make a similar build as I am. I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions, do not hesitate, post them below and as soon as I have the possibility, I will try to help you out. If I can't help you out, in the description below there are two Facebook links. Um, the guys out there are really helpful when you're having any issue, so do check those out. Okay, let's move on with the Hypercube now. So there's a reason why I haven't posted a video in a couple of weeks right now. This was by far one of the most difficult videos that I made on this build. And it all started because of one sentence. Okay, this was way easier <laughs> than I thought it was. Uh, right after that, I wanted to make connection with my computer and I received this. Computer says no. Refreshed. Computer's a bit slow today. Restart the computer. Computer says no. Restart the printer. Computer says no. Restart the router. Dead. So I didn't know what was going on, so I did a complete clean install of the firmware and that fixed it. Okay, let's get some movement out of it. No movement. Still no movement. Turned out I had the and stop switches uh, selected wrong so instead of it has to bump into it to close it and give a signal that this is the end stop I switched it around so he thought the end stops were all hit so I couldn't move anything finally I figured it out after sleeping over it, uh, uh, over it a couple of nights and then this happened <coughs> Turned out that I completely misaligned the threaded rod, so I had to make a fix for that. And for doing that, there was some more work included than I hoped. But enough right now about the mishaps that happened in the last two weeks. Let me show you what I actually accomplished in the last week. On this moment, you can see that my printer is doing some stuff. Uh, he's actually creating a height map of my heated bed. I know this looks a bit overwhelming and maybe you might think right now he skipped some steps. Don't worry, I'll explain this to you guys. I'm not an engineer, so I'm going to explain step by step how I accomplished this. So this video will actually be a party of three. First, I'm going to show you guys how I actually uh, hooked up my end stops. Uh, I showed you how I mounted it on the X carriage, but not for the Y axis yet. Second, I'm going to show you how I installed the threaded rod and the motor for the Z-axis. And third, and that's the most interesting one, I'm going to show you how my inductive sensor works. So, let's move to the end stops. This is my um, end stop that I'm using for the Y-axis. It's uh, only tightened down with one bolt, with one screw into the aluminium extrusion. Um, I do have to drill the hole a little bit bigger in here because it's uh, normally uh, M3 hole, now it's an M4 hole. Uh, of course there's something between it to prevent it uh, of shorting out. So if I move back my Y axis it will hit the switch right here, like this. And you can see it stops here and it's activated. You can see it because of the LED is burning. That's a nice thing about those uh, limit switches. You can always check if the end stop is hit. And on the Duet Wi-Fi you can see right here if it's receiving the signal. So that's very convenient if for some dark reason it doesn't work. You can check if your end stop is working 
on the instance itself and on your Duet Wi-Fi if it's working in here. So that was the Y axis. And of course on the X carriage, as you can see here, it does the same thing. Moving on to the Z axis, more specific, the drivetrain of the Z axis. Like always, I'm going to show you the parts, the parts that I'll be using first, and then I'll show the assembly. I'm going to start with this bad boy here. This is an 8mm threaded rod with a copper nut for this. I've got a flexible coupler with on one side a hole of 8mm and on the other side a hole of 5mm. I've got one stepper motor, of course. Also a bunch of screws. Some of them are to mount on the frame and I've got six of these M3 by 12 millimeter for the for mounting the motor and the plastic part that lifts the bed. So plastic parts. This one is the motor mount and this one is responsible to move the bed. So let's put this thing together. All done. I would advise to put some uh, lubrification on the copper nut. For example, a little bit of grease will be very useful. Um, it still stays metal, turning around metal, and that isn't a good thing. So let's move over to the Harpy Cube and put it into place. So the drivetrain is mounted into the Hypercube right now. While I'm here, I might I might as well explain you guys what did uh, what I had to do to adjust this. So first, I had to make these uh, this aluminium extrusion a little bit shorter. That way, I could move it to the back and adjust the alignment of the threaded rod. What I'm going to do right now, uh, before I'm going to hook this up and play with the z-axis a little to see if it works. I'm going to cut down the zip tie that I had to hold the bed in place and I'm going to manually descend it to the bottom. That way I can adjust the alignment from left to right. And when that's done I'm going to move it halfway so if I hook it up and there's something wrong with my settings uh, it won't slam into anything yet. So moving on. That's it, there's nothing more to it, so let's see if it moves. So as you could see it actually moves and it seems to work fine. In the beginning it made a little bit noise but nothing that a uh, little bit of grease couldn't help. So that's it for the y axis, the z axis, I'm sorry, for the z axis. Let's move on to the 
most interesting part of this build now. When it comes down to 3D printing, one of the most crucial parts that I can think of is the height of your print bed. Everything might work perfectly, but as long as your print bed isn't dead on, you will get some disappointing results. And to make sure that every time when I print something, the distance between my print bed and my hold end is perfect, I'm going to relay on this little fella. This is an inductive sensor. This will replace the limit switch or end stop uh, at my, on my Z axis. The difference between them is that it doesn't have to touch anything to get triggered. For example, when I try to touch it, nothing happens. But when I use something that's made out of metal and I come close to it, you will see the LEDs are turning on and it actually triggers and sends a signal to my printer. Why is this so cool? I'll show you once, it's in, once it is installed. Right now, we are going to take a look on how we have to connect it. In the section below, you see that you got four pins to connect a Z probe to your printer. From left to right, you will see you got your Z probe in signal. Next to it, you have a ground signal. Next, you got a Z probe mod. And then you got a plus 3.3 volt. And that's where we got a problem. This little thing right here got a working uh, voltage of 10 to 30 volt direct current. Most of these guys do. So you can't directly connect it to that connection. So we have to make a little workaround to make this work. Let's take a closer look to our Z-probe right now. Got my Z-probe right here and it is hooked up to my 12 volt power supply. The wiring is easy, you only have three wires. You've got the, the brown one, that's the plus. You've got a blue one, that's the ground wire. And you've got a black one, which is your signal wire. I already hooked mine up to my 12 volt power supply. Now let's measure what values it gives. So first, I've got a 12 volt input. I want to check my signal cable right now, so I keep my ground connected with ground. I'm going to move the plus on the inside of my signal cable. And as you can see, it has zero volts. That's just because my connection isn't closed yet. So now I'm going to move my screwdriver a little bit closer. Let's see when the LEDs are turning on. And you can see right now I've got 11.7 volts. So it actually works. The problem is I'm aiming for 3, vo 3 volts instead of 11. So how are we going to manage to get 3 volts at our signal cable? Well, you need, we will need two resistors for that. I've got one resistor of 10k, 9.7. And I've got one resistor of 30k. 29.9, close enough. So what you actually want to do is connect the 10k resistor to the ground and the 30k resistor to the signal input. I'm going to do this fast. And next what you want to do is connect those two together. I'm going to use the fourth slot in here that I got. So this is a 30k coming from the signal. And this is the 10k that is coming from my ground. Make sure those don't make connection between each other. And that's it. This will be my 3 volt output. Let's check what voltage it gives. So first I'm going to make sure the connection isn't open, isn't closed yet. So I've still got my 12 volt in here. And now I'm moving to my signal connection. Nothing. And when I'm closing the connection, it gives me 2.87 volts. This should be enough to tell my printer that my Z-probe is triggered. 
what I'm going to do right now is instead of using these uh, clamps, I'm going to solder the resistors on immediately into a cable and then I will connect it to my printer. So how did I hook this thing up? Well, I used the 12 volt supply that's coming directly from my PSU and on here on the top I connected my Z probe with the Z probe in. That's it, nothing more to it. And the neat thing is, right now it actually has two functions. It acts like an end stop if I want to hold my Z axis. You'll see the LEDs will turn on and it triggers pretty close to the bed. Next, at this point you can see that it's actually measuring the distance on different locations among the print bed. What it's actually doing right now is creating a height map of the print bed and it's sending it to the software. Next time I want to print something, it will calculate with this height map the exact distance between the nozzle and the print bed at every specific location. So he finished his sequence and right now he got, he's got the height map as I'm showing here. With every movement I make, it will auto compensate with the print bed. For example, if I move my X to the right, you notice that my print bed is actually moving down a little. When I home it again, it moves up. And this is what makes life way more easier. And this will assure that the distance between the hot end and the print bed is always at the same height. Well guys, that's it. I'm pretty happy with the result right now. Finally moving further and further to the end result. Um, if you like this video, do not forget to leave me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, do not hesitate, post them below and I get back to you. Right now, there are only a couple of things that I still have to do. Uh, first of all, cable management, because this is horrible. Then the X carriage, the assembly of it. The extruder motor and the heated bed. And hopefully, by the end of this week or next week, I will get the first print out of it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, see you in my next video.